What is back? Welcome up. Today we will be continuing our Victoria 3 tutorial series and we are going to be taking kind of a first look at companies which is a new mechanic that is going to be introduced in 1.5 as you can see by the placeholder icon. We are still in the 1.5 open beta. We are on update 1 and so a lot of this is liable to change but we do have uh, a sort of just first look at what companies look like and this type of thing and so we will be reviewing that as well as talking about what the strategies are going to look like for companies um, given the information that we have. Now, the main thing that you are going to get for companies is the companies will be associated with a specific industry. You can see here, Belgian gold is of, sort, of course associated with gold mines. Um, and whatever the industries these are associated with, the primary bonus you are getting is you are getting a throughput bonus that is contingent upon your prestige ranking and a construction bonus, again, contingent on your prestige ranking. But most of it will be from, uh, you know, just the base value. You will be getting bonuses in both these areas towards the industries the company is in, and this is the primary um, advantage of the company. Now, there's also prosperity, and if you hit the max prosperity bonus, you will also be awarded with a, bon a secondary bonus that is achieved at this prosperity. Now, I think it's important to emphasize uh, that the biggest aspect of this bonus is going to be the construction bonus. This is far and away the most important aspect of this, and it will be really useful. Um, now, how do you get companies? Well, you can unlock up to six companies max one through the laissez-faire law which now unlocks one company uh, with economic system making laissez-faire it was already really good but laissez-faire might even be really good into the late game when you have you know despite the IPT fall off as a result of getting access to an additional company but also uh, you can gain five companies from technology that's in the society tree. Um, they will be kind of off in this chain here. It's going to be corporations, business banks, uh, investment bonds, corporate management, and macroeconomics, I believe, is the last one, uh, which also gives market access price impact, which is very important in patch 1.5, and that's kind of where you get them. Um, there are, will also be two types of companies. There will be generic companies uh, that have no special requirements, according to you know states you need to own or uh you know cultures you need to have and then there will be unique companies that are contingent so for example society aname uh john cockrell however this is pronounced apologies to people who are from whatever or from belgium because i can't pronounce this this company is unique to Belgium. Generally, the unique companies will look a little bit better. Better. Uh, another example is uh, Japan has a bunch of culturally locked companies, uh, but for the most part, if you expand in certain areas, you can try and seek out uh, certain companies, which does change expansion strategies a little bit. And so uh, let's get into some other details about companies. Okay, let's talk strategy. Right now, I think the strongest strategy is one that will not be available by the time 1.5 fully releases, and that will be to actually keep an extra slot always open on your companies for whatever you're constructing in your queue right now you see we're constructing a lot of clothing in our queue uh, and you just use this to abuse the construction bonus the construction bonus is far and away the most valuable thing that you are getting from a company and so you know us being able to have our entire queue plus by 35 percent uh, is enormous now I assume this will not be uh, you know there will be some sort of penalty to discourage the player from playing like this but if there isn't this is gonna be the strongest thing now, the secondary thing we need to think about is we actually need to separate two different things. We need to separate whether how we, much we value the throughput and the construction and how much we value the prosperity bonus and the loud motorcycle outside because what these will these change what our strategy will be as the result of how productivity is calculated and how this interacts with prosperity. We'll get into it a little bit more, uh, but prosperity or productivity uh, is going to dip if you absolutely construct enormous amounts of things. And so, you know, as you are using the construction bonus to build more of the buildings and getting more goods produced with the throughput bonus, you depress the price of the good. And if you depress the price of the good, it's harder to get this prosperity bonus. And so it's important to both recognize this and also recognize that uh, for certain strategies, for certain companies, you know, you will not actually want to produce a ton of them and utilize the construction bonus, and instead you will want to, uh, you know, do something a little bit different because you will want to maintain the prosperity bonus. Now, the generic steel company, which in our case has been uh, dynamically named Wallonia Steel, is a really good example of a company where you don't really care about the throughput and the construction bonus you're getting. You can see here, we only have one industry here, um, rather than 
you know, the max of three. Uh, and so the construction and the throughput on this is much less valuable. Instead, what we really care about is this prosperity bonus, which is 10% state construction efficiency. And so we're going to slot that in. We will see that the prosperity is going up on this uh, per tick. And in order to kind of unpack this, we need to talk about productivity uh, in general. So the way productivity is calculated is you take the total price of the output goods, in this case, the steel, which is worth about 150k, and you minus the input goods, but not the input wages. And so we are doing the steel minus uh, the iron and the coal and uh, the uh, tools here. Uh, and so it'll be this minus this divided by the total number of laborers, in which case is around 50k, multiplied uh, by 52 to cover all 52 weeks of the year. And this is how we get this productivity figure here, which is 39. If we have a high enough productivity relative to the rest of the world, uh, you know, if we're in the upper edge, our prosperity will go up uh, and it will tick up. I believe if we see here uh, is at least uh, 1.25x the global average, it will go up. And if it's 75% uh, the global average, it will go down. And so this means we need to maintain a really high productivity. Uh, and so what would happen if we built a ton of steel mills and they all, you know, got employed up, what might actually happen if we just blast, blast, blast steel, you know, benefiting from the construction and the throughput, this will decrease the price of steel. Uh, now in 1.5, currently there's no bonus for companies for trading. I think there should be, and I've recommended this to the devs, but there's currently no bonus, which means we can't, you know, leverage this to uh, trade a whole bunch uh, into other people's markets. And the reason uh, Mappy makes it so that uh, market access price impact modifier makes it so that uh, sending out trade is harder than 1.4. And so we won't be able to increase the price as well from trading this price will go down and as this price goes down then our productivity will fall right and so we don't actually really want to construct a ton of this industry with Wallonia steel while we're trying to benefit from the state construction efficiency because this is really where it's at for this company if we take a look in you know the spreadsheet and talk about uh, steel specifically, I think it's important to note that for steel, uh, it will be very, very uh, hard to maintain productivity bonus because of the way that it works. You see that the, if on open hearth process here, the total outputs of steel at base prices are worth 6,000 and the total inputs uh, are 4,500. And so while there is a 1,500 net, which is a, sometime, a somewhat normal looking net, a proportionate uh, to the uh, amount of output, this net is actually relatively low. If coal and iron were even price and tools were all even price and the price of steel was depressed, you know, 25%, then there would be a net of zero, right? Uh, because this 6,000 when the price is depressed uh, would become 4,500. And this is an important distinction between something like steel, you know, and uh, one of the resource industries where in terms of, you know, relative to the, the net, relative to the output on diesel pump on these iron mines, for example, it's nearly two thirds or it's more than two thirds. Uh, the net is more than two thirds. And so if we depress this by 25%, we will still be able to have really high productivity as long as we have a lot of throughput. And so this is kind of important to recognize where if our strategy is Wallonia Steel specifically, what we will actually want to do for Wallonia Steel is we will want to depress, uh, you know, kind of the prices of the input goods, in this case, iron, coal, and tools, and also increase uh, the price of steel as much as possible. That way we can keep the margins big so we can have a high productivity figure uh, here. Okay, one of the ways we can affect prices in this way is by exporting steel. Steel's generally kind of hard to export, so this probably won't feel very effective. And importing and producing a lot of both iron and coal, and also uh, maybe producing a lot of tools uh, to try and facilitate that. There's a few other things that we can do though to try and increase productivity. Now, productivity uh, is the result of, uh, you know, the, the denominator is the total number of employees. And so even if it's not profitable, swapping on labor saving PMs will generally make the building more productive. And one of the reasons why it might be not profitable, but increase productivity is the result of how labor saving PMs work without getting too much into it. Labor saving PMs always fire laborers and they do not hire uh, the, the workers that have the 
higher wage multipliers who get paid more. So all the higher paid workers generally stay. And so there's a few exceptions. And so whenever we are, you know, f using a labor saving PM, we are decreasing the denominator, which makes it much easier to have a productive building. And so it could be the case that this water tube boiler is just a bad PM for us to be using on the steel um, in terms of profitability, which is distinct from productivity, right? Because profitability includes these wages. Uh, it could be the case that we want to use a labor saving PM just to try and get the company bonus in order to increase the prosperity. Another thing that's very important to note is that a really big driver of having high productivity is going to be having high throughput. You can see our throughput here is trending towards 90% on these steel mills here. And throughput increases the input goods and the overall outputs, but it does not decrease, um, you know, any sort of, uh, you, or sorry, it increases the input inputs, the outputs, and it does not increase the wages or the number of laborers. And so what we can do is we can try and really push throughput specifically on industries where we are trying to get their bonus. So, um, you know, maybe there's a world where we want to spread out our steel. Certainly there's a world where we want to spread our con out our consumer goods, uh, but there is a uh, you know, an interesting company in the form of uh, that only does groceries. And so let's take a look at this. Uh, not this one, not Sandman Get Well. We'll find it one moment. All right, we have the food company, Food Combine of Flanders, which is the generic uh, grocery company, which gives 5% birth rate. This birth rate is pretty good. Now, it seems to me that generally you would want to um, sort of spread out your consumer goods. But if we are trying to increase productivity, we might want to De uh, eat some inefficiency, uh, no pun intended, and instead build these tall, these food industries tall in one place. That way we are increasing our overall throughput because throughput will positively affect productivity, even if it's not positively affecting, uh, you know, profitability as a result of, you know, uh, having to sell at a slightly depressed price because of Mappy. And so this is another really important way uh, to try and do this. Uh, and so we can trade, uh, we can increase throughput uh, just to kind of go through where we're getting the throughput. 15% economies of scale, Mining Metal Consortium, uh, which is one of our companies, and we are also getting. Uh, so let's see, uh, an additional 25% from having two companies. If you have multiple companies, they only give half the bonus to throughput. And so we are getting this 90% from all this. I think we have the trade unions also happy. Yep, so the trade unions are going to be a lot better um, kind of moving forward. Well, they're already insane, but they're going to be really good. And so the throughput, uh, you know, trade to increase, decrease prices and utilizing uh, labor saving PMs, even if they aren't the best, are going to be how we, uh, you know, push productivity um, in the case of you know the companies where we are caring about our productivity bonus uh, more so than you know our throughput bonus or our construction bonus okay so which companies are going to be the ones that are going to be easier to have the prosperity bonus activated on um, this is an important question to ask because in the case of Wallonia steel we really don't want to be using this company if we can't have the prosperity bonus uh, generally speaking your gold bonus will always be active it's really hard to have gold mines that are getting you know this company throughput bonus that are not in the upper 25 or that are not 125% of uh, the global kind of uh, efficiency average. And if they are having that little bit of trouble, you know, you can go in and you can build coal and tools and this type of stuff um, in where your gold is at in order to try and do this. So gold is going to be the easiest um, to try and maintain this bonus. And the other ones are going to be, let's kind of I think it's going to be important to kind of come into the spreadsheet to talk about the other industries that are going to be best. But generally, the resource industries, you know, iron mines, uh, chop chops, and uh, oil specifically are really the ones. Um, these are going to be easier to maintain the prosperity bonus because there is a larger margin between input and output, which means that throughput will go a lot further uh, relative to price. Um, you know, as our input and outputs get tighter together, you know, as, you know, this 2800 gets closer to this 800, it will be more important that the price of the output goods is high relative to the price of the inputs. Uh, but because 
because throughput is percentage increasing this by, let's say it's 50%. Um, if it increases this by 50% to 1200 and this uh, by 50% to uh, 4200 and this by 50%, then the net will also be increased by 50% up to 1000, right? And so that's plus 1000 on the net, um, which is pretty good. And this will be relatively resilient to depressions in price. However, um, on industrial goods, you know, uh, we will be much more sensitive to if we increase the throughput, but we decrease the output price, our net will not be as high. And so uh, the resource industries are going to be uh, some of the easier ones for us to really, really boost up and maintain a prosperity bonus. After that, I think it is industrial goods um, with steel kind of being a tentative one because steel actually of the industrial ones, they kind of have some of the worst margins. And so they are going to be really sensitive to price depression and so you have to be careful with steel specifically like if we take a look at glass work versus steel we will see relative to the output the net is uh pretty large w when we're comparing it to like something like steel steel you cannot maintain the prosperity bonus if you depress the price of um but uh with the industrial goods specifically it is very easy for you as a player to influence the price of the good just by building more demand you know in the game the construction loop uh involves all industrial goods and the best thing you can do other than having your car be super loud uh, is going to be you know building more construction for the most part in terms of your government spending and so everything that is in this loop uh, specifically is going to be easier uh, for you as the player to have a prosperity bonus on like tools wood iron steel you know boom booms uh, glass all this type of stuff it's going to be much easier for you to maintain a prosperity bonus on and so that's why the the industrial Industrial goods, uh, it's going to be a little easier to influence with prices in a more direct way. After the industrial goods, um, it's probably you know, consumer goods, uh, although consumer goods, it can be a little bit hard to maintain the bonus on. Uh, currently, the consumption for the louder cars outside is not quite as good as... is not quite as good as, uh, like... Uh, the, the consumption rate on groceries is not very good, so I think the groceries bonus is really hard to maintain, but I think furniture might be alongside industrial with how easy it is to maintain the bonus uh, as a result of uh, hardwood being really depressed and you as the player being able to uh, abuse that and perhaps using hardwood when it's even not profitable to increase the prosperity bonus for the furnitures. But these I think are gonna be next, kind of with where it's going to be good or easy to maintain the prosperity bonus. And finally, uh, the ones where it's going to be really hard to maintain the prosperity bonus, uh, I think. Uh, can, local goods are actually an interesting one with railways and power plants because this is, you can influence this a lot, but it's going to be tedious. Um, but, well, railways actually will just be really hard to maintain the prosperity bonus, I think. That will require a little bit more testing. But the last thing is agricultural goods. Uh, and agricultural prices tend to get very, very depressed. And while the PMs, while we have a very large net relative to the output on most of the agricultural goods, uh, you know, they tend to get very depressed in price. And so it will be hard to maintain the prosperity bonus as you build a lot of these. And I think you are mainly doing it for the construction and the throughput with those with those loud cars outside. You're mainly going for construction and throughput when you assign an agricultural company and you are not going, you know, for, uh, for this productivity bonus. Okay, well, let's say we are going for companies for the construction and throughput bonus, what is it we should look for? And I think um, we can highlight some examples of companies that are gonna be good or industries that are gonna be good to have, uh, you know, this throughput and construction on uh, from a variety of heuristics. And the first one, we're gonna look at railroads. I actually think railroads will be one of the best uh, to do it on. I also think the railroads bonuses will be kind of hard to achieve, uh, but why, why railroads? Well, in general, you usually have 0% throughput on railroads roads we are actually are getting 10 percent from one of our company's uh prosperity bonuses but it is generally you have no throughput on railroads and so when you get more throughput on a railroad this represents a 10 percent increase in your outputs or it rep whatever it is it's just that much percentage increase on your outputs and so it'll be really valuable on something on railroads as well as any other industry um you know that you tend to not be able to build up a lot of throughput on so another good example of something that's 
hard to get throughput on is logging. Uh, generally, logging camps have a kind of capped number, in this case 23, and so you get N minus 1 in your throughput bonus generally. They took the logging off of rural folk, the throughput bonus, and so logging is an industry where we're not going to get, you know, a large throughput bonus on, and so when we add throughput to the logging, it will be more valuable than, say, when we add it to steel, like another good uh, kind of one that's like this is the fishing wharves, where fishing, generally you get only get them to one to five, and so it will be valuable on this. Now, I don't think it's really good on fishing for other reasons, but logging is like a good shout uh, because it uh, is going to, you know, you're going to get a throughput bonus when you don't have very much uh, anyways. And so uh, an example of where throughput is less valuable is we are nearly at 100% throughput here on the steel. Let's imagine we're at 100%. If we got an additional 20% throughput on the steel, that would only actually represent a 10% increase uh, in the amount of steel we are producing. And so it is less valuable when you already have throughput to get more throughput because it increases your the slice of your economy that is this industry. It increases it by a smaller percentage. Um, you know, if we if we get the 10% or 20% throughput on railroads, this is just a 20% increase in the output of all of our railroads. If we get a 20% increase on uh, steel mills, assuming we we're actually at 100, which we're not, this would represent a 10% increase. And so looking for industries where you don't have a lot of throughput already uh, can be particularly useful. Another heuristic is all resource industries are going to be good ones to have company bonuses on because not, uh, they're, well, they're part of the construction loop, but other than that, um, they are scarce. And they also tend to not be have a 51 cap, so they will very often not have as much throughput anyways. Uh, but since, uh, you know, when you reach late game, you will want almost all your companies on resources uh, because these are scarce. Eventually, you run out of your ability to build more resources, and you can always build more manufacturing. But you can't build more resources, and so getting throughput on these resources is going to be, uh, you know, good. Another good example of something or a way of thinking about stuff is tools is a reasonable one to try and get, uh, you know, the throughput bonus on. Uh, you can see here we have a ton of bonus uh, percent already. Why would it be useful? Well, to be fair, we're already getting 17% from a company bonus, right? But this would be good because as a proportion of our economy, tools is relatively large. Now, it's important whenever you're evaluating something as a proportion of your economy, you take into account construction costs. So cold mines, they cost 400 construction. Tooling workshops cost 600. So 600 times you know, uh, the amount of tooling workshops we have, in this case, uh, 65, let's call it 60, and let's call it, what is that, uh, 600 times 60, never do math when recording a video. Okay, it's 36,000 worth of construction. And so as I was saying, you know, this 36,000 worth of construction, it's way more than construction we have invested in Glassworks. And so you can think of it, the throughput, as modifying your construction. And so, you know, let's say we can find an industry where we have a lot of, uh, you know, uh, perhaps we don't have a lot of them, um, then it's really not going to be a good industry. So fertilizer plants, we have five. I think arms industries here, we only have two. And so getting 20% throughput on this, even though, you know, our arms industry uh, currently doesn't have a lot of throughput to begin with, uh, it's really not going to be that valuable to us because it's such a large, low percentage of our economy. Um, now, also, uh, there's another instance where, you know, if wages relative uh, to our outputs, or if rages relative to the input goods are high, uh, getting throughput is more valuable on these industries as well. And the university, uh, while there's no company that gets university throughput, the university as a building is a really good example of this because you see here our wages are 46,000 and our paper is only 12,000. And so adding another university has a huge cost in terms of wages relative to the input goods cost. Throughput does not increase wages, right? And so if we have input industries in particular that have really high wages, uh, gaining a throughput bonus on those is particularly valuable. And a good, good example of that is ports. Now, there's currently not a lot of companies that give you throughput on ports, but we can see here the canal companies both do. You'll have to take my word for it. This is the Suez Canal Company, which actually looks quite strong. Um, and this is going to give us throughput on ports. And if we take a look at ports, uh, you know, 
these are going to be uh, relatively high in terms of cost is the wages. Nearly 80% of our cost here, or about 80%, is the wages. And so when we get throughput on these, it will increase the convoys, the infrastructure, the urbanization, and it will... Actually, I'm not sure if it increases the urbanization. But it will increase these without increasing the wages. And so these, because of how this works with the buildings, or uh, because of how throughput but works it's going to be particularly valuable um on industries where you know the wages are really high the wage multipliers tend to be higher on industrial good industries for like tooling workshops relative to agriculture which is another one of the reasons why agricultural companies i think uh generally don't look as good uh in addition to maintaining the prosperity bonus is hard um because the wage multipliers tend to get a lot higher on something like the steel mills you know we can jump into the section of the spreadsheet that's perhaps not that fleshed out and look at this average wage multiplier uh, when we are using labor saving PMs here and you can see that you know the average wage multiplier using labor saving PMs 1.39 on something like the grain farms you know coal mines 1.6 and then if we scroll down a little we'll see stuff like 1.62 for glassworks you know 1.75 for steel 1.75 for the motor industries and so in general if we are increasing throughput on uh, industries that are going to be made on profitable as a result of high wages uh, it's going to be disproportionately more valuable uh, on those industries like steel although to be clear I do think that it is the government buildings uh, with which you will really tend to value uh, the the increased throughput uh, as it relates to wages in particular and worry about it less for the other buildings just know that you know ports specifically we're not just talking about making it so we had like 20% more ports because ports also have 0% throughput to begin with is 20% more ports at 80% of the cost is kind of a good way to think about it and so while we do not have a large share of our economy in ports you know uh, if we just look at our infrastructure or here let's come into here and look at our development we see we only have 17 ports and they only cost 14 construction so that's not a whole lot uh, you know that's like, like 6,800 uh, total uh, construction sunk into ports relative to our tooling industries which was 36,000 uh, but it still might be worth thinking that hey maybe it's better on ports and specifically if they you know make adjustments to trade right now trade in uh, update one is not very strong uh, as a result of Mappy but if they make updates to trade uh, you know stacking a whole bunch of modifiers uh, together uh, might make it so that you know absolutely blasting ports in outer space uh, benefiting from throughput and increased convoy percentage and this type of thing might be a really interesting strategy but just to kind of go through it again uh, and summarize uh, what we care about throughput on and we what we care about construction on, probably the number one thing uh, is going to be uh, what percentage of your economy is the building and uh, tooling workshops might be the best in most runs um, because they will be a very large share of your economy. Uh, you know, maybe you can make the, the, the argument for uh, more so, you know, uh, these uh, mines, but if we have, while we have more coal mines than we have tools uh coal mines are going to be a lot less construction or they're 400 construction versus the tools actually let's just double check what their construction is i believe they're 400 uh 400 construction to the tool 600 and so uh, i believe we have more construction sunk in on tools uh despite the fact that we have more coal mines um and so this i think will be the number one thing uh i think the secondary thing is going to be stuff that we don't have throughput on already and so you know uh coal might be a little bit better than tools to have a throughput bonus on uh because uh well for several reasons because it uh, checks almost every box uh is really the reason but stuff we don't have a lot of throughputs on uh throughput on is like railways is i think a tremendous example um don't have a lot of throughput on it generally and so it will really benefit another one is resources in general which is kind of sounds out why i think that you know resources in general uh will be uh you know, really good uh, uh, because eventually you run out of these and so companies will allow you to uh, prevent yourself from running out of them. Also, 
I think that resource industries, um, when tied with something else, will generally make it easier to hit the productivity bonus. Um, and so, you know, we see there or there are going to be some companies that have resource and like something like a rail tied together. And when these two are tied together, it can be easier for us to hit the productivity bonus and also benefit from like the throughput on the rails here. And while the sulfur kind of carries the productivity bonus of this company. And so uh, I think that's a useful thing to think about. Um, so the resource is scarce. Uh, we talked about, uh, you know, stuff that just generally doesn't have a lot of throughput. And kind of the last one was wages. If the wages are a really high proportion of the cost of the building, which is going to be true more so in government buildings. Um, currently, there aren't a lot of companies for this, but there are companies that give you ports and 80% uh, of our cost is in the wages. And so if we can increase throughput by 20%, this is going to give us 20% more of a building with very, very marginal cost and it just be you know, in the ships we are producing. Okay, so let's take a closer look at some of the unique companies and just explore them a little bit. I think we're gonna start with the Suez Canal Company because it relates to what we were just talking about. But, uh, you know, currently there's actually no way to get productivity on this. And I'm certain that the devs are gonna change this, but you can't actually get the productivity bonus. But let's assume that you can, and it will always be productive because obviously, uh, ports don't sell any goods and the Suez Canal doesn't sell any goods so it's literally impossible right now but let's say it's always profitable because the Suez Canal makes one transportation or something um, in this instance um, we are seeing 10% trade route bureaucracy cost and the very interesting modifier that I've not seen before minus 15% convoys requirement now this will be multiplicatively effective with increased convoys uh, that you can get you know from either tech or other companies and this is very very interesting because something like this might make it so easy to trade huge volumes um, and actually add a really nice benefit to the Suez Canal uh, which has been a major complaint by a lot of uh, you know people that the Suez Canal should help you with something this will help you trade a ton uh, you know you blast out the convoys and then you also get decreased convoys requirement at the same time uh, and you can build these things faster too you know because the construction bonus um, you know and the minus trade route bureaucracy class uh, cost this might make you kind of a trading powerhouse which is interesting now of course trade right now is a little bit nerfed uh, but this is a very interesting company to look at and also is this uh, I'm not going to read all this title, but uh, you know, you can read it too. Um, and this is one of the railroad companies that is uh, paired with a uh, resource industry, which I think these will be very strong because you're getting your resource industry, uh, you know, the throughput and construction and throughput and construction on railways. Now railways, we have 40 right now, or we have 39, but let's assume it's 40. This represents an enormous proportion of our economy too, right? Remember, that's one of the heuristics we care about because railways cost 800 construction. So this cost 32,000 construction to build all the railroads we have. So getting throughput on these when they have no throughput already, railways are gonna look particularly good. There's a ton of railway companies that have no additional thing tied to them, which I think will make it kind of hard to hunt down the prosperity bonus unless you're really active with turning on, you know, some labor saving PMs here and there and this type of thing with the railways. But I also think railways will be hard to maintain a prosperity bonus on. And so, you know, these three railway companies that have this pairing of, uh, of uh, resource and the railway company are gonna be particularly good. And on top of that, this one also gives 10% infrastructure. Uh, the industrialist approval is an interesting modifier. Um, you know, with plus three, it might be enough to like, for this to actually be somewhat worth it, but the 10% infrastructure, that's quite, quite strong. Moving to the next one, the Kaiping Mining Company is another one of these railroad plus resource companies, which gives you 10% tech spread. Uh, this one's located in Hebei. Uh, you need Hebei, not Beijing, even though it says Beijing is okay. Uh, the the sulfur one is located in Peru, Bolivia, I believe. But the Kaiping Mining Company uh, will give you technology spread, and it's also on coal, which I think coal is going to be moving forward a really good resource because what do all the labor-saving PMs use that allow you to turn up prosperity they all use coal um, especially in the early game and so getting you know coal plus railroads this looks really good but I think the strongest a railway plus resource company is a different one and that is the standard oil company uh, you know which gives you uh, oil 
which this is going to be something where having the throughput on as a result of scarcity is incredibly useful. Uh, but also, it has railroads and it gives 20% railway building throughput, you know, which is a little like the 10% increased infrastructure. I think it's a little bit better uh, overall uh, because you're outputting more transportation too. Uh, and this is going to be, you know, absolutely insane getting 40% on the railroads uh, and you're going to be able to build them way faster. You're going to be able to use a lot of the labor saving PMs and and turn up quite well now currently in 1.5.1 the update or sorry 1.5.2 which is where we are in the open beta uh you actually can't use this company because it requires having a level 11 uh built uh you know uh oil company uh in the midwest and the midwest doesn't have a single state that has 11 or more oil and so you can't actually use this company uh in the public beta right now but i'm assuming they'll make that happen uh and that this in particular will be the strongest looking one another company archetype i think is going to be really strong is going to be the double resources plus x manufacturing um we see a lot of these for iron plus coal plus steel uh here we see the carnegie steel company which gives uh you know as their prosperity bonus shipyards building throughput railway building throughput but we're mainly here for the construction and uh also uh the what is it the throughput because as a proportion of our economy this 51 iron mines 83 coal mines 27 steel mines that's a big chunk of our economy and so getting throughput on all that is incredibly useful and also we're just thinking of things in terms of the construction loop uh you know we really care about uh producing steel once we get on steel frame buildings uh, of which iron and coal feed into it and also uh, the steel is used to make tools which feed into iron and coal and so for like mappy as well as like ramping up construction being a major point of the game the specific of uh, the uh, the the company that gives iron coal and steel you know with this Carnegie Steel company is going to be pretty good I think the Carnegie Steel company is the best of these uh, because it's giving railway building throughput as part of its prosperity bonus uh, but there are several others that are worth noting like New Russia uh, Company Limited which is giving also giving railway uh, building throughput and industrialist approval actually industrialist pr approval might be better than shipyards building throughput now that I think about it because shipyards generally reflect a relatively small percentage of your company so this is probably best the carnegie one's probably second you know this uk one is also here where it's giving iron uh coal and shipyards and military shipyards again not a large percentage of our uh, our economies generally so this throughput might not be as worth it um a little notable one kind of while we're cruising through this is the south manchuria railway company which is probably the best railroad company but it's locked in you have to have japanese as your primary culture which is why we maybe talked about it less but the, here we see resource plus coal plus glass and so that's really strong as well uh, but uh, you know kind of cruising on there are a few more of these uh, you know iron plus coal plus steel you know, we also have the Duro, uh, Duro y Campania. Uh, now, the Duro y Campania is, I believe you need control of the Asturias. The Carnegie Company is in the U.S. Uh, the Russia Company is unsurprisingly in the Russia. And the uh, other one is also in Great Britain. And I think Spain has the last one um, with the Duro y Campania, which is giving arms industry and artillery, uh, you know, throughput. And these industries, I think, generally don't reflect too large a percentage of your economy. So I'm not sure how good this is but again we're doing this mainly for you know this just occupying a huge percentage of our economy and the stuff that we are actively building early on in the game as part of the core construction loop there are also a few unique companies in belgium that make you know this idea of expanding for specific companies like thinking of it the game in this term uh for belgium specifically uh is kind of a bit interesting notably is going to be this uh society Oname john cockerel which we are currently using in this run which gives us you know tools a uh, steel and uh you know motor industries which is a decent percentage of our economy for the throughput and construction purposes uh you know keeping in mind that steel is 800 construction as is motor Motor industries but also we have railway buildings throughput as our prosperity bonus which is incredibly strong 
Also uniquely available to Belgium is the Campagne du Congo, uh, which is probably the best wood company in the game uh, because it features both wood and iron. This is the only company as of right now that gives you both wood and iron. It also gives you rubber, but I'm pretty sure it's locked behind uh, having uh, Belgian, uh, you know, kind of... Uh, it's not showing it here, but I believe you do have to be Belgian in terms of your nationality in order to make use of this. There's another Belgian company, but it's not uh, as good as these two in particular. Um, but, uh, you know, having throughput and construction on logging and iron in the very early game when you're on iron frame buildings is just absolutely tremendous uh and then scaling into the late game getting throughput on rubber uh logging and uh iron is very good for multiple multitude of reasons one they don't have a lot of throughput to begin with um you know these uh these industries are going to be scarce eventually you run out of them uh you know uh, they, it's it's just very very strong you're also building them a lot in the early game but you know the late game scarcity is going to be a huge driver of this being late game very 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 strong another interesting company is tata which is located in the dutch east indies slash british raj um now this company is interesting you know uh clothing and steel combined can represent a decent proportion of your economy but the prosperity bonuses are uh, a little bit unique looking so the power level on this I, overall i don't think is all that high but the prosperity bonuses are interesting ones um max weekly construction progress meaning uh so currently the base construction progress progress is 20 uh, there's some text that increase it a little bit uh, but this makes it so that your buildings finish faster or you can dedicated more construction to each building per week uh, and then also 10 percent private uh, construction allocation which some people don't like but i think this is a positive modifier which allows your private queue to um, fill up more uh you know which can kind of allow you to expand construction you know if your investment pool is building up and building up and building up then a company like this will be very very useful to be able to leverage that company into actually constructing stuff and so tata is an interesting one but i don't think it's quite there in terms of the power level Greece has a couple of companies, and while I don't think they're BIS or like the best companies possible, um, they are interesting because uh, Greece is a place that's relatively easy to take, and both uh, Basiliades and Kupas are uh, available just by taking Attica, or you could, you know, take all of Greece to conquest in your runs, and so these are interesting, you know, uh, engines plus shipyards, not a huge percentage of your economy, uh, but this 20% convoys and 5% infrastructure is interesting on the prosperity bonus um i'm not sure how good it is uh but if you are trying to do this trade empire type of idea uh maybe this is good and five percent infrastructure also looks pretty good and then we also have koopas where you know tools do generally represent a large proportion of your economy uh and you know engines will kind of later on into the game and then this one on top of that gives railway building throughput as one of its prosperity modifiers and steel mill industries throughput as one of them as well and so i think this is a reasonably strong you know tool company uh that can kind of be accessed uh a little bit easier by just going after athens um you know i do think it's quite a bit stronger than just the generic uh vanilla tool company so this dynamically named Belgian Metalworks is the generic uh, tool company. And you can see here it gives us tools, but then uh, artillery and arms industries, uh, which generally won't be too, too large a percentage of our economy. Although you could build a little military industrial complex. Maybe you like the army offense more though. Uh, but I think this uh, the, the, the Greek one is a little bit better than this. Uh, but this is kind of what you're comparing to. So if you were thinking of putting this in, maybe going to Greece in order to conquer it is reasonable. So a bit of an interesting grouping of companies that's possible is the company we just talked about with the tools, which gives 10% offense. But then also this group company, which is, you know, a Prussian company company where you know okay it's nothing to write home about we see artillery arms industries and steel notably that would be stacked with the tools arms industries and artillery and so you would not be benefiting from the full throughput and you're also stacking throughput on something where you have a lot uh, but this gives 10% kill rate and also very nice is 10% rail railway building throughput this is actually a very strong prosperity bonus uh, but maintaining it might be a little weird and awkward especially because you have to be at war all the time in order for your arms and artillery to you know be prop uh properly consistent in their prosperity bonus giving but this gives 10 percent kill rate and then rheinmetall also another uh you know north german company is going to give you explosives artillery 
and munitions plants, and I think you see where we're going with this, with 15% army uh, offense and 10% army defense. I think this is another one. Uh, no, but that one's from Poland, but it's like ships and other stuff. But the idea is, is you can get 10% offense from the, uh, the generic tools company, then an additional 25% offense here in Rheinmetall, uh, 10% defense, and 10% kill rate all off of three companies, you know, in terms of uh, like a military fighting machine strategy here, uh, trying to maintain with Prussia. And what you would have to do is you notice there's huge overlap, artillery foundry, artillery foundry, artillery on the tooling one, the lab car outside. Also, you know, uh, arms industries is on two of them. Uh, and so I think, no, steel's not on two of them, but it, you know, kind of combining all of these uh, is a bit of an interesting uh, approach maybe, uh, you know, to try and leverage having a really, really strong military with Prussia. We could take a look at the Japanese companies, which in general look pretty strong, because I know you guys only want one thing, and it's Japan content. Um, and uh, these all look relatively strong. We see here kind of a weird hodgepodge of fertilizer, uh, lead, and textile mills, maybe a medium size of the economy in terms of construction and throughput, you know, mainly by the lead and the uh, textile bills, but remember, rice is super OP in 1.5, where it, uh, it it should cost twice as much construction as it does. They doubled the outputs, they doubled the inputs, they doubled the labor, but they didn't double the construction costs, so it's two buildings for the price of one, and so maybe this fertilizer is actually pretty big nice, and maintaining prosperity on this will be super big easy, but the bonus here we're getting is iron mines building throughput and industrialist political strength. Very interesting to be getting political strength on one of these companies not super common but uh, I do think this one is available to uh, anyone who conquers uh, Japan I think this one is locked into being Japanese this one you have to be Japanese uh, yeah, Japanese is primary culture. This, as we mentioned, uh, this railway plus uh, uh, coal plus, you know, an extra industry, just railway plus coal, uh, and this uh, this would already make it a very solid company, but then you get the glassworks on top, and overall just looks like a very, very solid company with the South Manchuria Railway Company. Notably, uh, it does require uh, owning Manchurian land, so Japan does have to peel it off of China, uh, but this is interesting, uh, you know, where it is encouraging you to uh, invade Manchuria in order to facilitate uh, getting this very strong company. And we also have Mitsubishi, which is, uh, you know, just, it doesn't look that strong. I think any comp, uh, because, you know, how many military shipyards how many motor industries uh, you do have the coal mines uh, but overall uh, I think the prosperity bonus isn't so good and you could probably find a, a company that has a better coal pairing that's coal plus X um, and especially if you're getting the South Manchuria railway you'll already be getting the construction bonus on the coal and you will only get half the throughput bonus um, if you include Mitsubishi along with it. Last, we're gonna cruise through some of the American companies. We see Standard Oil, uh, which is, as we've already talked about it, I think this is the best railway company um, and the best oil company. Uh, just getting 40% throughput on the rails, uh, you know, in addition to getting 20% throughput on oil rigs, uh, faster construction speeds, I do think this is uh, quite, quite strong, especially as you start to enter the later phases in the game. Early on, I think it's gonna be about wood, coal, steel, tools, iron, this type of thing, uh, but then, you know, once you get into the later phase, um, stuff like railways and oil is going to get a lot better. Uh, we do have the fruit company, if you want to become the Banana Republic. It uh, does have to be either Dixie or uh, Yankee for this one. Uh, don't think this one's very good. 20% plantation throughput, actually, uh, I mean... 20% plantation throughput is quite strong because it's applying to all plantations, but I think you're going to have a hard time maintaining the prosperity bonus. We've talked about prosperity is kind of hard to maintain when you are, you know, on agricultural stuff, um, or at least this has been my experience. And, you know, looking at the PMs in the spreadsheet and this type of thing, it makes sense because you tend to depre depress the output price and tr you, can't pro you can't really trade that well at this current point in time. But if they change it and make trade really easy uh, and make it so you can have a prosperity bonus, 20% plantations is nothing to sneeze at and could be part of a strategy. This minus four rural folk approval, not very exciting though. Um, so, okay, we have the Carnegie Steel Company, which as we discussed, one of the better companies in the game. You know, uh, 
Standard Oil, why are we hovered over China? We should be hovered over the US. Standard Oil and Carnegie, both being some of the best the best companies in the game, um, really just makes USA an insane and on the back of companies. I think they overall have the best companies, assuming they fix Standard Oil so you can actually use it. Uh, but this will be really good early on where we are going, you know, coal, iron, steel, um, and then even into the late game, uh, getting the throughput on the iron and the coal when you run out is going to be really good. And the railway building throughput, very good. General Electric is, I think, the best both electrics industry and the best power plants industry. Uh, overall, the other ones don't are, look relatively underwhelming. Um, but, you know, getting, getting throughput on both of these, uh, I'm not sure how nice it is. Um, it, we'll have to... Uh, it will require more late game play, I think, to really evaluate this one better. But 5% innovation is a decent modifier, as is Motor Industries building throughput. Um, but often, by the time you're going to be getting all this, the 5% innovation, like, it's just, uh, you're comparing this to the fixed cost of adding 5% universities, which might not be that high to you at that point in time. Uh, you know, the gold company that gives 10% minting, um, that might be giving you more value than, uh, you know, avoiding having not having to build an extra 5% five univer five universities and the motor industry's throughput. Eh, it's, um, okay, fair enough. William Cramp and Sons, uh, Navy Offense and Defense, uh, really haven't played too much with the Navy, don't know how, um, or we haven't gotten to see a lot of naval battles, don't know how critical offense and defense on the Navy are going to be, and so I don't think this prosperity bonus is that that great, uh, though, and, uh, you know, this is not going to represent a very large share of our economy, I don't think, you know, in terms of the industries getting the construction and the throughput, uh, and so I don't think this company is very good. And then the Fo Ford Motor Company being the last company, uh, which is giving you know motor industries plus additional motor industries throughput uh, again I don't think this is gonna really represent a huge large share of your economies I don't think this prosperity bonus or the companies that are fixed onto here are all that great um, I would have loved to have seen uh, instead of motor industries throughput cars or automobiles output modifier where you're not increasing the inputs and instead you're just getting more outputs this would have been a really interesting one that kind of forces you into cars a little bit but also output is a much stronger modifier than throughput because throughput remember increases the input goods and the outputs when you have an output modifier that would make it basically impossible to lose the prosperity bonus one um, but also uh, it really is just quite powerful like an example of an output bonus is on uh, New York you do have electricity building output on electricity which just increases the electricity made without increasing you know the input requirements and so but these are kind of the american companies um that we just went over we are here in belgium though with this one um i hope you enjoyed uh you know kind of this uh uh little introductory type of thing on companies we are expecting it to change uh, at least a little bit but i tried to provide um you know some strategies that i think are going to stand the test of time to some degree if they continue to use productivity and also in terms of you know thinking our way through uh productivity balance also thinking between uh what we value in the company whether it's the throughput and the construction which is mainly going to be based on what percentage of our economy it is but there's other factors or if we are really valuing the prosperity bonus and also talking about how this relates, how we don't want to overbuild and all these sorts of things. Um, if anyone has any comments of companies they think are particularly interesting, um, you know, there's a whole, whole lot of them. There's over a hundred. Feel free to post them in the comments below. Um, but other than that, uh, you know, have a good day.